Hi there, it's Enderverse. Thanks for your patience, my friend. Finally, I managed to put together the second episode of the Top 200 RPG series. A few days late, but here we are. Now without any further ado, let's dive into the video. Epic Fight Mod has made a huge return in October last year, featuring a supported version for 1.20.1 and remaking the animation and style of every single weapon, including the katana, spears, long swords, the good old knuckles, the tachi, and the large sword. The new update also featured new skills like parrying, dashing forward, lashing yourself into the sky and more. Following this incredible overhaul, new add-ons arrived at the scene, most prominently Weapons of Miracle. Although the textures of these new weapons are not quite aligned with Epic Fight Mod, the delivery here was spot on. Weapons of Miracles didn't just add new weapons and let the Epic Fight Mod do the rest, instead the add-on went extra mile of animating the swords, spears and guns here to stand out from the epic fight mod weapons. Spice of Life Valheim Edition will introduce the food system from the renowned game Valheim. Each type of food in the game will now be unique, as it will regenerate your hearts instantly, depending on the food you picked. This also means that passive regeneration through saturation is no longer a thing. Dragon Mount's legacy gives purpose to the Ender Dragon egg. When placed under the right conditions, the egg will hatch after exactly 10 minutes. Following the hatching, you can tame the dragon and ride it for yourself. The original mod has been posted almost a decade now. This mod, however, revived it, along with adding plenty more features to each one of these dragons. The animations became a lot more fluid, and some of the dragons will even glow with shaders. Biospherical expansion adds a couple of world generation types to Minecraft. For the sake of clarity, however, I'll be going with the default setting. The mod introduced some of the most incomprehensible land masses. These terrain features have been carefully crafted to look quite immersive and very wild. With the mod also comes underground structures. And when observing the world generation in this mod, you realize that it's not an enhanced version of the vanilla structures, nor is it inspired by real life. It's simply pure fantasy and imagination, which is loyal to our cause in this video. Yang's mod are one of the few that could fit into both RPG and Vanilla Plus videos. This time, we choose the Yang Spirit Jungle Temples for our current RPG episode. This mod enhances these structures to look bigger and spookier to some extent. Inside the temples is where the actual fun lays. The place is full of traps and difficult parkours to complete. You'll also be facing plenty of puzzling paths until you eventually reach the final room, in which case you'll have to go through a lot of trial and error before opening the main hall. The special thing about this mod is that not every temple shares the same features. Some will include completely different rooms and entrances. With the addition of a mod such as Alex's mobs, the temples will feature a pool of deadly crocodiles, which is quite of an interesting compatibility. With the Artifacts mod, it is possible to uncover new trinkets that have special effects and abilities. Some of these artifacts will contain active effects. Others' effects will be more in the passive side instead. The artifacts are not easily acquired, as you'll be able to find one artifact per structure. A legendary mod that I had the honor to add to our RPG series is the Ether. The name of the mod was taken from an ancient Greek concept, as the mod will allow you to travel to the ether dimension, a kingdom of light and aberrated creatures. The mod has been around for a decade now, and only recently started updating habitually. This is, as Asian Hasquad put it, the Minecraft mod. Goblin Traders adds two types of goblins into Minecraft. These creatures will work like a wandering trader, except they will offer some pretty useful trades. Amongst their services is the offer to fix or enchant your tools. The goblins can also offer some exclusive enchantments that are otherwise unattainable in the vanilla game. 
the Endergeric expansion improves the end dimension by adding new types of blocks and fire effects on the end island. But the real change happens on the end terrains. A small new biome was introduced, featuring new fascinating particles, tall purple trees, and new types of insects with their own nest. Here, the possibility of coming across a buffalo is quite common. This is a frog-like creature able of squashing you to death, but can also be tamed and ridden. When ridden, the buffalo will help you explore the area around you much more efficiently, as it can hop on the air and fly you anywhere. With the mud are some new items that can be crafted into balloons. These balloons can be mounted into a boat, in which case you'll have yourself a hot air balloon. Bountiful is an incredibly valuable RPG mod, as it adds a quest system into the game. There isn't much friction in taking on these quests either, since the bounty posts will be commonly found on the villages. The bounty posts will ask you to complete certain challenges for a variety of rewards. These rewards will differ in value depending on the difficulty of the task. All the biomes you'll go is a 1.19.4 world gen mod adding over 80 unique and magical biomes in Minecraft. This mod, opposite to many other world generation mods, took creative liberty when making these biomes, since there are varying shapes for the trees and new items and blocks added with the mod. In some biomes, there is the possibility of coming across new types of villages, a number of which can look truly magnificent. Simply sorts as new types of melee weapons with unique sounds, effects, and animations. The said weapons can also perform a plethora of magical abilities, discerning them from most other weapon mods. The mod was built for better combat, so it would be pointless to not use them both at the same time. The Eye of Vendor no longer wants to be used, so it's about time to discover all of the other 16 Eye of Vendor provided by the Endry Master. Some of these eyes can be found on different structures like the Desert Pyramids, Pillager Outposts, and some even can be buried deep below the sand in a treasure chest. Some of the eyes can be crafted, while others will be found on the nether, precisely the Bastion Remnant and the Nether Fortress. Once you collect 12 eyes, just head to the end portal and place the eyes. The portal should light normally as you finish. I love this mod in that it creates excitement around traveling to the end. Archers is one of the mods from the RPG series, this time, as the name implies, the focus is placed on archery, adding new weapons and crossbows. Not just that, but also the ability to enchant and equip a spellbook, allowing you to transmute the spells from the book into your weapon of choice. There are also new tower structures included with the mod. In here, there is a wizard you can trade with. And I've enjoyed the mod so much, especially the casting of spells through arrows. The Luminous mod is a special guest to our RPG series, as it enlightens the forests in Minecraft with special additions including overhauled biomes with detailed accessory blocks, wild animals like the zebras in the savannas, deers in the forests, and fireflies on the swamps, along with legendary creatures you could face by advancing deeper into the mud. There are currently 7 of these creatures to uncover, but I'll let you find the other 5 for yourself. The mod also features decorational blocks, which you can use to brighten up your interiors. The Luminous Projects is one of the most underrated mods I've ever tried, and we'll be taking a closer look at it sometime in the future. One of the best world gen mods in the list is Structurally Towers. Although the mod is not as adventurous as something like Dungeons Arise mod, but it sure is explorative by itself. The mod covers a singular type of structures, those being towers. In the vanilla game, the only tower I'm aware of is the Pillager Outpost, this mod, however, adds a couple of dozen towers each spawning in different climates and biomes. Despite the minimalist style of building here, the mod has succeeded, as it was downloaded over 7 million times in CurseForge, so it's worth being mentioned here. The Down Era reintroduces extinct beasts into Minecraft. In our previous episode, we covered mods such as Unusual Prehistory, and while that mod was incredibly well made, it honestly doesn't compare to what Down Era is offering. For starters, there is the possibility of taming any of these beasts simply by bringing their natural feed based on their type. Shortly after consuming a lot of the said feed, the dinosaur would be yours to control. By shift or right clicking this behemoth, an options wheel shows up, listing all of the behaviors, movements, and eating preferences. 
I pacified one of the largest dinosaurs on the mud, which allowed me to jam through trees no matter their size. These kinds of dinosaurs are also extremely deadly and will often one shoot your opponents on the spot. It is needless to say that in comparison to any other dinosaur mods out there, the animations here stands out and are extremely fluid. I truly enjoyed playing the mod back in January and ever since many bugs, shortcomings and incompatibilities have been reformed. Believe me, if you are into the age of reptiles, not choosing this mod would be a clear no-brainer. Being an RPG fan and an adventurer by day, you'll most likely not enjoy spending an hour or two trying to build a house. Although I highly respect those who take creativity seriously, it is just not what you are trying to achieve here. That's why Prefabricated mod exists. It streamlines the building process in the game by including a bunch of pre-built houses. Just choose the right location, make sure it's not too tight, and just place your desired structure there. This will allow you, my fellow RPG player, to have more time to scavenge the world around you, kill the bosses far away from home, and bring back the rewards to your town. The Endless Backpack is a new item you could craft using a handful of leather and a chest. The Endless Mod alone provides somewhat of an ugly design to the backpack. That's why I highly recommend having it installed alongside Endless Add-on. Both mods will give you extensive portable storage along with a stylish design that is simple but fits our RPG purpose. Enhanced visuals add the blood effect to your screen whenever you take damage. This effect will gradually intensify as you lose hearts. The mod also included other effects like being flashbanged by a creeper, distortion effect when chased by an enderman, burning effect to fire and lava damage, and finally, water effect when you are drowning. This mod can work as a visual warning for you to retreat, since most of the time we don't look at our hearts all that often. Ice and Fire is a mythical creature mod based on the novel A Song of Ice and Fire which ultimately means that you will spot a lot of similarities between the mod and the Game of Thrones series. Ice and Fire featured some of the most brutal and relentless hostile mobs. Most of these creatures, if not all, will one-shoot you. The mod offers a progressive system in which you are out to kill the dragons, obtain their egg, and hatch it under certain conditions. Following this tough process, you will have yourself a dragon. This, without any debate, is one of the best RPG mods of all time. Though, keep in mind that it will significantly elevate the difficulty of your game, as you will be mauled by things like the Cyclops, or even turn into a statue by monsters like the Medusa. Chested Companions makes it possible to mount a chest on your dog. In my own experience with many RPG games and progressive movies, the bits usually play an important role. That's why I added this mod. Not only are you gonna have a dog that protects you to death, but you'll also be able to store some necessary items that you could use mid-battle. Cats can also be mounted with chests, and I feel like this mod could fit both RPG and Vanilla Plus users. Darkest Souls is one of the fittest mods on the list, as it adopts many monsters and weapons from the Soul series of games. The animations and models of these creatures are honestly incredible, but I feel like the mod has some shortcomings related to the weapons. It would have been better if the author took extra time to produce a more coherent and well-designed models. But the mod is great overall and it's quite new being only 2 months old, so let's not judge it. Aquaculture 2 is a mod specialized in overhauling the fishing process in Minecraft as it adds 4 new fishing rods, iron, gold, diamond and neptunium along with new fish types spawning in different climates. Chuckle boxes are some useful blocks allowing you to store your fishing rods, hooks and baits. They should be your only partner when you go out fishing. With this mod you can use fillet knives to cut out the skin and the bones from the fish, leaving only the flesh. This flesh can then be cooked or mixed with seagrass to produce sushi. After some time fishing, it is possible to fish out a loot box. These loot boxes can range anywhere from casual chests to legendary Neptunium bounty. This bounty will usually contain Neptunium ingots, making it possible to forge new oceanic armor sets, weapons and tools. Each one of these armors, weapons and tools are useful in their own way and will empower you greatly in their water. So I would recommend only wearing them when you are about to dive below the surface of the ocean. 
This is another example of how specializing in one category can be highly beneficial and often produces much better results. Healing Bed is a mod with an obvious name. After taking some damage, you can nestle asleep and you'll wake up with full hearts. This is a feature I've been seeing in many RPG games, so it's worth adding here. Sleeping Overhaul 2 is also a mod related to beds and sleeping. Once you hit the sack, you can choose either to sleep or just lay in bed. When you press sleep, an animation will begin running time very rapidly in the background. This is not merely a visual show, but an actual acceleration from nighttime to daytime, meaning crops and animals will be growing while you are sleeping. The Wandering Gambler is a walking casino you could come across from time to time. As the name implies, this goblin will offer to multiply your items, but with a chance of losing a roll too. This is a dangerous mod as it can get you hooked in the gambling cycle, since you may start gambling for hours on end. Born in Chaos includes very well-made satanic monsters. Amongst these abnormal creatures are the Missionary, Skeleton Trasher, Fallen Chaos Knight, and the fearable bosses like the Lord Pumpkinhead and more. Some of these monsters will spawn on the ocean, while others will be sniffing around in the desert. It goes without saying that defeating most of these creatures will grant some items that then can be forged into weapons and armors. The mod has no right to be this good, and I've personally never seen such an extended catalog of well designed and beautifully integrated wholesale mobs. Creatures and Crawlers is a mod mod, adding few hostile creatures that will attack you on the spot, along with peaceful creatures like the Ilk. You could kill these animals for certain loot, and even a trophy to put on your wall. You will often spot these creatures hunting on one another, and sometimes even get hunted yourself. The mod also adds fictional creatures like the Chupacabra, a cheap loving monster, or the Skinwalker, which is not even an animal. It's just an insane murderer wearing the skin of a wolf. This mod, similar to others on the list, is quite new and very underrated, so give it a try, my friend. A new mod added to the Let's Do mod collection, it's the Let's Do Bloom in Nature. The mod added new biomes with all kinds of different types of trees, a wide range of color themes, and even new animals. This collection of mods have been very successful, in that it usually sticks to the vanilla theme of the game while also boosting the exploration aspect of it. This mod is no exception and will help elevate this series of mods even more. Jet and Elias Armors is an add-on for the previously mentioned Epic Fight mod. This add-on included new armors each supporting the Epic Fight mod animation. In my own experience with the mod, I realized that each one of these armors are fit for a specific weapon in the Epic Fight mods collection so it is highly valuable for any epic fight fan out there. This mod will include an underground dungeon with a singular boss at the very bottom, that being the Nameless Guardian. What struck me about the mod is the diverse range of attacks performed by this guardian. At times it will swing its axe so rapidly, knocking you back viciously. Other times the guardian will dash forward, stunning you in the process. And my favorite attack is the laser beam it releases when its health is below a certain point. I kinda rushed the recording of this mod and I missed a lot of things about it, so I endorse you guys to check it out for yourselves and catch up with what I've missed. Origins is a mod that will allow you to choose an origin that you cannot change afterward, so choose carefully. Some of these origins can turn you into a human fish and others will make you a bird. There are a couple of dozen more origins to discover, so I highly recommend adding this mod to your list. Gateways to Eternity is a mod that will give you the chance to craft a portal, which will spawn hostile mobs in waves. Those waves will get progressively tougher to beat, but also more rewarding as you progress. This is a perfect mod for any RPG mod pack, as it will wake up the fighter within you, rendering you stronger and more resilient. And the fact that you can craft the portals in-game is quite relieving and will ease the process of engaging in these war zones. Campfire Resting will allow you to travel through time, 
Not in the literal sense, of course, as you will only be skipping through certain phases of the day and night. This is a feature I discovered when I played The Witcher 3, as you will be able to skip the day or night by meditation. And in case you don't know, that game is considered one of the greatest RPG games of all time. Small Ships is an enjoyable mod that has to do with traveling overseas. The mod makes it possible to build a ship. Depending on the ship you end up choosing, you'll be able to do things like mounting shields on your ship for more protection and a personalized look, traveling your soldiers from other mods in your ship, along with letting your workers jump abroad too. You can store your items on the ship, and you can also mount cannons, which will level up the offensive aspect of your ship. This mod is quite immersive, and with the two added recruits and workers mod, you can create an incredibly accurate RPG feel. I do apologize, however, since I included this mod in my top 200 Vanilla Plus series second episode, but I couldn't help but add it here too, since it fits both sides of playing. Realm RPG Sea Dwellers will add some odd sea creatures that will function like an underwater villager. Through trading raw fish with the dweller, you can obtain some concealed loot chests, those you can right click to unpack their content. Loot chests are usually mediocre, but have the chance of giving you incredibly valuable items. You just need to gamble a bit more before that happens. A bit similar to biomes of Lenny, Nature Spirits includes a variety of new colorful and magical biomes in Minecraft. These new biomes are not vanilla friendly, which is exactly why I included it here. The forests and other biomes here can have special effects of their own, and will include new blocks too. This is a highly explorative mod, as it offers a lot of biomes with even new structures. Legendary tooltips will add a special frame around items, this way you can discern between the garbage and the valuable items. The mod is also supportive of items from other mods, so it will be a useful addition to our mod pack. Zyro's minimap is the most popular of its type. The mod added this convenient minimap on the top of your screen. This minimap is highly configurable, as you can choose to tweak things like the size, angle, and the zoom of the minimap. With the addition of the Zyro's world map add-on, you can open up this large map, showing all of the chunks you've discovered. This will be an immensely valuable mod on the list, since a big part of our RPG pursuit has to do with exploration. Easing this part, however, will only do good for our RPG cause. Thanks for watching, and I'll be releasing the full mod pack few days or weeks from now, since it is a bit hard to get all of the mods working together. I would however recommend subscribing if you want to get notified about the next episode, which will be aired during June. See ya in the next one, my friend.